What's going on, everybody? It is April 3rd. Uh, we've got a Tuesday slate on our hands. We're only going to be looking at the uh, the main slate. And I say we because I am joined today by uh, fellow awesomeo.com writer, Jake Hari. Jake, welcome. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Um, yeah, we got a good nine game slate here. I'm excited to break it down with you and um, let you lead the way. Hmm. And uh, yeah, it should be fun. A lot of good pitching today. Yeah. At least a few pitchers that I'm interested in. Um, last night was awful for pitching. <laughs> it was not a great slate. Um, if you played Houston bats, you were probably a little bit disappointed, like I was. But um, hopefully today is going to be a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, it can't be any worse for me. Um, I played watching the back of my eyelids as I took um, antibiotics and painkillers for my root canal yesterday. So... Today has to be better by default. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're just, you know, this one's obviously new to us, everybody. Uh, first time I've been having a back and forth um, ever in one of these scenarios. So if there's anything that we do that you like, please let us know in the comments. Uh, if there's anything that we're doing that you don't like, also please let us know in the comments. Um, we want to make this as desirable of a, of a show for you guys each day. So. Uh, if, if there's stuff you think we missed or you want us to go over a little bit more in depth, um, yeah, just let us know. But we're going to dive in on Blue Jays, White Sox, if that works for you. Yeah. You want me to lead it off? Uh, let me hit the, uh, the the major stuff to start. We've got the Blue Jays uh, yeah. hosting the White Sox. Uh, Blue Jays with a 5.2 implied run total, uh, second highest on the board right now. Uh, White Sox with a 3.8 implied run total not the best second worst on the slate uh, that works out to a blue jays win percentage of 64 percent and we've got ja hap uh going against uh, miguel gonzalez of the white Sox. uh anything standing out to you first and foremost from the jays from the jays um yeah so well or white Sox. Talk... go either direction oh okay uh, well, I'll talk about Jay Hat first. So he's he's pretty good at limiting power. Um, outside of Stanton, I think who got him a couple times last in his first start, he was he was pretty good. Um, but, so the White Sox have a bunch of free swingers on their team, even though their their power versus lefties, especially, is really scary. Yeah. Um, Hap he he had a twenty nine percent hard hit rate under four xFIP and twenty three point seven percent K rate versus righties last year um so i actually don't mind hap I, I mostly play on DraftKings. i should mention so okay when i'm when i'm referring to players i'm usually looking at their their dk price okay that's good um, i i generally play on fanduel so we'll be getting oh, uh, both perspectives here <laughs> yeah that'll be perfect so he's 7900 on DraftKings. um that that white Sox lineup is pretty scary and we've got some other aces going today. I guess, I don't know if Hap would be considered an ace. He is the Blue Jays' opening day starter. Um, I don't necessarily know that you'll need him, but um, and me being a single entry player, I don't know that'll end up on my lineups, but I, I do think he is pretty interesting with that team total with a little bit of K upside in this matchup. So yeah, I do like Hap a little bit. I, I like Hap too. Uh, I, I'd have no problem playing him on FanDuel uh, 7,100. I think that's a, a reasonable value spot. And then I think that he looks fine on DK as well at that price. It's weird. I see that implied run total being so low for the White Sox. And then I look at the White Sox lineup and, you know, I'm super nervous about you know, the amount of righty bats that they have. And I like, I'm having trouble getting those two things to compute. I can see this going one of two ways. I can see J.A. Happ having a solid night, or I could see that going the way that's terrifying me. And for some reason, the White Sox just smash them. Uh, it's like, I, I mean, I guess that I'm a little wrong based on that total. I wouldn't expect that big of a gap with that much, like, sort of, quality righty hitting but i guess i'm probably overrating the white Sox hitters a bit yeah um and probably you know miguel gonzalez is not very good that doesn't that, that'll make the line uh, grow a little bit as well yeah yeah so like i get the, i get the blue jays line I'm, I'm a little surprised also about the the white Sox team total i know i mean i have some respect for hap just because he is 
this is a, a matchup where I think he could just limit the damage enough. I don't think yeah. he's going to go out there and, and throw a shutout. Like, he might give up a home run or two. Um, but he's just kind of – he just kind of gets there. And he's just – like, that's why I like him for 8K. And there's enough there's enough strikeouts. Um, you, know, you got Delmonico in there. I don't know. But then the rest of the guys are going to be either switch hitters or righties, it looks like. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that Hap can just do enough to be solid here. But I mean, in my pitchers, I'm usually looking for the huge K upside. Right. Yeah, I don't I, know. I think for me, Hap is probably just someone that I want a little bit of. Mm-hmm. But I, I think there's, even though he grades out as like an exceptional value for me, I think there's some downside risk. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Sure. I, I'm, I'm just on the fence with him. I don't know. I can't get to a point where I'm comfortable in what I'm looking at. I don't know if it's just like previous season bias driving my White Sox like love. I don't know what that would be. I just see like Jose Abreu putting a ball into orbit for some reason. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the scary part about playing Hap, and that's why he'll, he'll probably be pretty low owned. So if you have like yeah, fifteen percent of him, you're gonna be over the field if you're if you're Definitely. MMEing. So Definitely. I, I I assume we're in the same agreement here that uh, neither of us are touching Miguel Gonzalez. Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, okay. he he just he doesn't strike out enough guys. A bunch of hard contact to lefties, a bunch of pulled hard contact to lefties. Um, so like, I like guys like Smoke especially. Love Justin Smoke. He I think he's thirty seven hundred on DraftKings. He'll be pretty popular, I would think. But first base is always stacked, so sure. you don't really have to worry about ownership too much because you got like, like Freddie Freeman and um, you know. Houston, Marlon Gonzalez, there's a bunch of first basemen that I have on my list. So um, Smoke's probably one of the top plays on the slate for me. Um, he's been crushing the ball already. Um, so he, he's the one guy. And then uh, Solarte as well, he's 2,900, just way too cheap. Um, and then maybe Curtis Granderson for 3K. I don't know why these Blue Jays are so cheap. Yeah, like, I don't – that was going to be my next point. Like they're just – they're grading out – incredibly here um in a matchup that is just downright tasty miguel gonzalez has a projected 5.52 fip from steamer 6ks per nine like that's just yeah they're gonna be putting the bat on the ball the entire game Um, yeah i have no problem running out big groups of of blue jays on FanDuel or on DraftKings. yeah and and you know i i want to target the lefties but like you can play Josh Donaldson, you can play Grichuk has a ton of power. It's not like yeah. Miguel Gonzalez is some world beater against righties. He does give up, um, give up a three fourteen woba, uh, five point five seven xfit last year, thirty one percent hard contact. So it's not like he's yeah. You he's, can get anybody on either side of the plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I have no issues grabbing anybody even probably that in the top six of the order of the Blue Jays. Yeah, me too. Uh, White Sox. Um, yeah, obviously Garcia would be the one guy for thirty eight hundred. Um, yeah. He's near the top. If you just go on on uh, Statcast, just players uh, who like to sort by average exit velocity. Okay. Uh, Abisal Garcia is fifth in the MLB in thirteen batted ball um, events at ninety seven point eight miles per hour. So you've got these White Sox guys. Uh, Davidson's actually number one. He's over 102 miles per hour average because he had those three, three bombs. Were like, yeah. yeah, they were like 115 miles an hour. Yeah, bombs. Uh, so he, <laughs> that I mean, that's the scary part about playing J.A. Happ. It's, right. It's just, you know, he might pitch okay, but if you make two mistakes, all of a sudden you give up um, a three-run homer or something, then you, he's ruined. So Yeah, I um, can understand um, – a White Sox stack. It's I don't think it's like the best value on a dollar for dollar basis, mm-hmm. but I can see that sort of path. Even though, God, it sounds so ridiculous with that three point eight expected run total. Yeah, maybe maybe I don't really believe what I'm saying. <laughs> well, and, you know they uh, they were low owned on opening day against a lefty. Um, you know Duffy might have been a little bit hurt. I think it was Duffy. Um, but yeah, like they were low owned and they crushed him. Yeah, so. Yeah. White Sox against lefties are going to be a thing this year. So there's no, I mean, Jay Happ isn't a guy that's prone to getting blown up, I don't think. But 
there there is a lot of power here. You could be seeing a home run or two, definitely. Yeah, I think if I was going to grab anything from the White Sox, it would probably just be Garcia and Abreu mm-hmm. um, yeah. and not try to get too cute with anybody else. Because yeah. I think even though, like, you know, you're getting the righty-lefty matchup, these guys rake regardless. Um, so I think that would be the only real direction I would want to go. I mean, grabbing both of them is probably the extent of it all. Yeah. Okay. Let's hop back over to the next game. Let me filter this pitching list back down. Let's take a look at uh, Mets Phillies. Uh, Mets with a 4.1 expected, uh, excuse me, run output. Uh, Phillies with a 3.9 implied total. Mets would be 53% to win. We've got Matt Harvey going for the Mets and uh, Ben Lively going for the Phillies. Anything standing out for you, uh, either squad? Um, yeah, so the, the thing with Lively is, at least last year, he couldn't K any, uh, any lefties. He was 11% K rate in 2017, but he also doesn't give up a hard kind of lefties. So I don't, like, at first I was like, oh, Lively, okay, I want to stack up some Mets. But um, when it's guys like that who just, they don't K a lot, but they also don't give up a lot of hard contact. Um, gives up, or um, I think he's a pretty good at creating ground balls. Um, that sounds familiar but, to me. But I don't have I it can't. in front of me right here. Okay, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, 41.9% ground ball rate. Um, that's higher than his fly ball rate. So um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm more looking at one offs here for the Mets. Um, there, there's three guys that, that I'm interested in okay. specifically. So Cespedes for 4,900, um, even though he is a righty, and then Bruce for 4K, and then as Drupal Cabrera for 3,300. Those would be the, the main guys I want to target. I don't know if I want to stack up Mets, but um, th- those would be the, the guys that I'm looking at for one-offs. And Cabrera is just super cheap at 3,300, and people don't like to play him for whatever reason. Yeah, 2600 on uh, on FanDuel as well. Um, I'm pretty much in the same boat as you here. Uh, you know, Lively projected steamer FIP of 5.4 is just atrocious. Um, I, I, I'm on the same page with sort of showing a little bit of apprehension on a Mets stack. That 4.1 run total is, is not anything to write home about. Um, oh, we got need to make sure that we're taking a look at weather as well. Yeah, I was just going to say, I was just Google searching that right now. If I remember in my first pass, there's a lot of water across um, a bunch of these games, but I don't remember if I was looking at the early slate or not. Um, I'm with you, though, on Cespedes and Bruce. I mean, obviously, Bruce has had, you know, tons of success in the against righties, comparatively speaking. Um, you know, I don't have, I wouldn't necessarily have uh, a problem with Brandon Nimmo. Um, so if you wanted to go with like a one, two, three stack on the Mets, I can get there, but that, that 4.1 expected runs is just, it's too low to be super confident of anything. Yeah. At least for me. Um, and so I'm just looking at like the weather. It looks like I don't have the radar in front of me, but just like the hourly percentage, yeah. it looks like it's going to be, there's going to be rain around game time. So I don't know. This game got postponed yesterday, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if it's gonna they're gonna just try to get it in or whatever. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be raining all day. Lovely. So yeah, so. use uh, use discretion if you're trying to grab anybody from from this yeah. game. I know uh, I didn't mention it in whatever game got scratched two days ago. So I'm gonna try to yeah. make sure we talk about weather. Obviously, very yeah. important. Um, yeah. You normally only have to worry about weather what once a year in the NBA when you start having a, a leaky smoothie center, smoothie king center, or whatever it was. All right. Um, let's see, Matt Harvey. Any interest? Uh no, not for me. Yeah, I'm, same, I'm same more at a wait and see stage with him. He was brutal last year against lefties. Uh, 208 WHIP, 36.7% hard contact, 426 WOBA. Um, as many K's per nine as uh, as many walks per nine as K, K's per nine. That's brutal. Uh, yeah, so he. <laughs> He was really bad. I don't know that he's that bad. Um, probably was pitching through some injuries. For sure. But um, he 
he was better against righties, but he still couldn't miss bats. So uh, the Philly stack, I really like. Um, the lefty power of Santana and Nick Williams, I like those guys as one-offs. And then, of course, in a stack. But you could just go one through five with Cesar Hernandez, Santana, Williams, Hoskins, and Aaron Alfair. Those guys, because if uh, if Harvey's letting guys on base and his whip is super high, especially against lefties, and you start off with three lefties right in a row, then Hoskins and uh, Alfair could definitely finish the job, drive them in. So I, I like a Phillies one through five here. Interesting. Um, I'd probably only go one to four if it were me, but I, I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah. I think that they could look good. Again, I'm a little... I'm mostly nervous about that low implied total. 3.9 is just... For the amount of games that are at like 4.2, 4.3 or higher, it's hard for me to get to the Phillies as anything other than one-offs. Although I see it in GPP scenarios, you know, Harvey could be bad. Um, my focus would probably only be on Hernandez and Santana. Uh, a little bit of Nick Williams, but I don't see the, the like, the high end from him. Okay. Um, I like the power of Santana here. Uh, he would probably be my main one-off focus. But okay. definitely no pitching, um for me i know part of harvey or or ben lively yeah so um we're both on some mets and phillies bats here and i, I mean i just like nick williams just because he more of a one-off but obviously in a stack you can put in a 3200 hundred dollar player with some power especially if you're fitting in hoskins and santana who are a little bit more expensive so absolutely um, yeah, yeah at some point in time you need to pay down a little bit yeah yeah so williams just he's just got some power and um it's a really good matchup against Harvey for him. So, um, yeah, I like him for 3,200. I've always liked playing him. I probably play him too much. So, <laughs> Everybody yeah. has those guys yeah. where you like you naturally uh, you naturally pick them up from time to time. Right. I love that email that you get from, I don't know, like from FanDuel, you get the, the summary email of your entire season. Like, oh, you've rostered Otto Porter 47% of the time you've had lineups. And it's like, wow, I, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think my guy was... my. I played Seeger like every slate he was on. <laughs> Corey Seeger. You. I mean, you I don't know, know why. But it's not like he's not good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next game up: Braves and Nats. Uh, Braves have a four point three uh, implied total. Nats with a four point four. <laughs> Nats are fifty one percent to win. Um, we've got Julio Terahan for the Braves. My boy. I'll have to put the jersey shirt on for him tonight. Uh, we've got AJ Cole going for the Nats. Um, I've got a lot I like here. Um, I don't know where you stand, but uh, pitching wise, I I'm really interested in Julio tonight. You are okay. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it, it's I know it sounds ridiculous. No, no, because I get it. obviously the Nats um, Nats offense is legit, uh, but they're a little righty heavy. And I think that if he can manage uh, not giving up anything ridiculous to Harper, um, he'll have a stretch of a lot of righty on righty matchups, which in my like I think is great for him. Um, just from I've watched him pitch more than probably anybody in baseball at this point for the Braves, so I think his price looks great, fifty nine hundred on FanDuel um, really allows you to go after some additional bats. And there are times where he just looks electric. Uh, it's not always, but he still sort of has that in his arm from time to time. And I don't know if it's just my Braves homerism getting me here, but I think that uh, he grades out really well just from his, from where his price is. Where you, what are you yeah. thinking? Um, I'm assuming not the same thing. <laughs> No, I get it. I, I mean, he's 6,800 on DraftKings. So, um, yeah, I guess I, I do have a little bit of interest. You were talking about the, the righty-heavy lineup for the Nats. Like, it looks like probably six righties at least. And then Eaton, I mean, okay, so the one bag you're scared of, you're really scared of, is, is Harper, and you, you should be because right. he's got about as good of a chance to hit a home run tonight as anyone. He's just – he's locked in. He's, like – walked or homered in 10 out of his 
last 11 at bats. Yeah. Not that that's going to continue, but he's just, he's just so good. And he's awesome against righties and Teron is not good against lefties. So he's not, (laughs) um, but facing six righties, if he can navigate Harper a little bit, even if he walks him or whatever, you know, you're still, he's still got quite a bit of K upside here, I think. So I actually don't mind Teron for what he is. He's 6,800. What is he on FanDuel? 5,900 on FanDuel. Oh yeah. So that, I mean, he's so cheap. So he was, he was good in his first start too. Yeah. So, and that that was a more lefty heavy lineup. I think it was against the Phillies. Yeah. So, like if he can get through, if he can get through one, two, three to start this game without any sort of major hiccups, or even just get through it clean, um, you know, coming back in the second for Zimmerman, Kendrick, Turner, righty, 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 and then going, you know, righty, lefty pitcher, he can get off to a good start, and it's just it's all going to be like if if Harper puts one in the cheap seats immediately it could get dicey but at that 5900 price point it really lets you just go crazy on the bats on FanDuel yeah yeah so um yeah I'd want to play him more on FanDuel um, I would agree I mean the win's not a sure thing by any means he he's a home dog but whatever slight slight home dog I guess and the win means more on FanDuel but I still think on either site he's He's just super cheap, and if you're going to try to pay up for Kershaw or Verlander, or, um, even like Chase Anderson, you're probably going to need some, a cheaper pitcher on DraftKings, especially. Yeah, I think he, I think he slots in as a really nice second option. Yeah, um, and I, I mean, I just like a couple guys that are near his price range, so that's why I didn't look at him too much. But it, it makes sense for under seven K. I get it. I assume you're liking Garrett Richards at sixty five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm falling for that one again. And so. I, I'm, I mean, I'm with you. He grades out, you know, as a tremendous value at that price. Yeah. I mean, he'd grade out as a tremendous value at a price a lot higher than that too. Uh huh. But we'll get to that, I guess. Uh, from a bats perspective, or I guess, I mean, we could probably touch on AJ Cole and say that we're not interested. Yeah, no, no AJ Cole. So he got absolutely smacked around by lefties last year, under twenty percent K rate, uh, two point oh eight WHIP. That's like Matt Harvey level. Forty seven percent hard contact against lefties, near six x FIP. So, I mean, and the Braves have a bunch of well, I've yeah, they their, start with, I've got their order in as lefty, 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 lefty. Yeah, so. yeah. So he could just get crushed here, right away. Um, and Ciarte, Albies, I mean, if he's giving up, I don't know how good Cole is at preventing um, steals. So that's going to be something I'll have to look at once we're done. Or I would imagine it's nothing crazy. Look it up. Yeah. So, yeah, Enciarte, Albies, Freeman, Marcakis, and Preston Tucker. Like, that's another one through five where I could just see them, you know, maybe they're not going to hit five home runs combined, but um, you can get single steal single yeah. and all of a sudden you're racking up points i was gonna say a lot of, a lot of two for really fives well. with a, a single and a double and you know a run score yeah. or something like yeah. that. yeah and i don't i mean do you think they're gonna be popular 4.3 run total what's I don't the weather that. look like do you still have that up in front of you yeah um so it looks like it's gonna be 75 a little bit of wind blowing in from right so maybe a slight downgrade to like freddie freeman but still he could get it out in that park in pretty much any weather yeah. so um, I I wouldn't expect him to be crazy popular. Yeah, I don't I don't think so either. So and they're no. they're cheap. Like Freeman's forty six hundred on DraftKings, Tucker twenty six hundred, Marquez is thirty five, and then Albies and Inciarte both super cheap too. So I really yeah, like I, the Braves stack. Yeah, me too. I'd I'd go with any combination of those first five guys and be real happy about it. Mm-hmm. It's just a perfect matchup. Uh, just yeah. getting so many lefty bats there, uh, you know. You should they should be able to get to him relatively early, but that matchup will look better and better as the game goes on. If they can turn that lineup over into like this, you know, the second and third time through, um, right? You know, he's just going to be he's going to have some trouble with that many lefty bats in a row. So yeah, I'd, no issues at all grabbing any sort of parts of those first five guys for the Braves. And yeah. I don't really have a priority of any of those guys from a value perspective. They all look 
pretty similar to me. Obviously, Freeman, the best bat out of the group, but you're certainly paying the most for him as well. Yeah. Um, I guess I don't really have a favorite either, uh, besides Freddie Freeman. Sure. I mean, there are quite a few second basemen I like, so Albies is definitely high up on my list. And then Inciarte, Tucker, and Marquecas are all outfield outfielders, so the stack, like the five-man stack as a whole is going to be super unknown because you're not going to want to use three right. Braves as no. all your outfield spots when you got a bunch of really good outfielders tonight. But, um, you know, maybe pick two out of the three and get in a Mike Trout or someone like that. Um, I think that's a really good strategy tonight. I love the Braves tonight. So, Well, that's what I like to hear because I would like to see them win tonight. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> As a Braves fan. Yeah. Um, and now for the Nats, I mean, there's... Uh, it's hard to ever, like, not like the Nats. I, th I think their pricing is still okay. Um, yeah. I'm, I see this through the dip, like, in, you know, through the lens of hoping that Terahan can be good. But there are certainly uh, a regular amount of pitching performances from him where he is not. And... You know, if he's struggling, it could get ugly in a hurry. I like the pricing of everybody on the Nats. I would just sort of want to be on the opposite side of it. Yeah. Um, so it's really just Bryce Harper for me. And then I don't really want to target righties against Tehran just because he's pretty good against righties. He's, he's really good at limiting um, hard contact. He's got more, he had more soft contact than hard contact last year against right handed, right handed batters. So those are the guys that I just kind of ignore because I, I do make limited lineups. So if I was making a bunch of lineups, then I'd probably have a Nat stack just because they're they're the Nats. Yeah, exactly. Not, it's not like some elite pitcher they're going against. Right. But um, four point eight runs. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No, uh, I'll have a limited amount of Nat stacks um, just because I feel like I don't have a choice. Um, yeah. It, the only part that, like, makes me hate that is, um, so on FanDuel, for me to have a Nats stack, what I would really love to do is run out Julio as my pitcher since he's oh, such yeah. a great value, but yeah. I'm obviously not going to do that. He's, like, to me, he's the best value pitcher on FanDuel in that sort of range. So it makes it trickier because I need that value from pitching to get to the Nats. So otherwise I'd be going to, like, I don't know. Kendall Graveman or something that I'm really disgusted well, there, with. <laughs> there, there might be another guy. I, I've got another guy that I that I kind of like in okay. games. That's we'll, that's around Teron. We'll get to that, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's hard to talk too much about the Nats. Like, we don't exactly have a ton of interesting stuff to say about why you should play Bryce Harper or, you know, Rendon or guys like you know they're they're high level bats, like obviously play Bryce Harper in a scenario like this in a one-off no like it's just he's got one of the like you said before he's got one of the better chances of hitting home run than anybody on the slate mm -hmm. he's probably the best uh, yeah <laughs> so. he's probably a top three guy in, yeah. as far as home run hunting so 5300 yeah. on DraftKings is is warranted for sure sure um yeah I'll, I'll have limited amounts of Nat stacks just because of the way that my construction will look but I would get it um, it might be a, something a little bit more to pay attention to just in case the weather is really crazy everywhere else. I mean, yeah. You know, just being able to get that game in might be a giant plus for tonight. Mm -hmm. All right, let's scoot over to the Brewers Cardinals unless you have anything else for this game. Did we go over the um, Orioles Astros? That would be after Brewers Cardinals. Unless, oh, okay. Did that game time change by any chance? I've got it in here oh. at 8 10. Oh, I see, I see 7 10. I don't know. I'm just okay. probably looking at it. We can go um, Brewers Cardinals. All right, perfect. Okay. So Brewers with a 4.7 uh, expected runs, Cardinals 4.3. Uh, that's a Brewers 54% chance to win. Chase Anderson on the hill for the Brewers. Jack Flaherty going for the Cardinals. Um, from a pitching perspective, I'm indifferent to both guys. Uh, I'm, I don't mind Chase Anderson on FanDuel that much. He's probably not who, I'm, who I'd be looking at on DK, but I'm interested to hear your thoughts. 
Yeah. All right. So this is the guy I was talking about. Um, okay. Flaherty. He's six thousand on FanDuel. I see. Yeah. And he is. I think he's six thousand on DraftKings too. Let me pull up that game. Yeah, he's six thousand on DraftKings. Uh, yeah. He had some really insane strikeout splits last year in pretty short sample. He had like five or six starts. Um, Thirteen percent Ks versus lefties. Twenty nine versus righties. Um, okay. So if you look at his like plate discipline numbers, uh, just like uh, game to game, so his game logs, and I look at the swinging strike to see if guys are are missing bats. He had a 5.6 percent swinging strike in his swinging strike percentage in his first start, and then after that he was 11.6, 12.9, 11.8, 12.5, and then 22.2 in his last start against the Brewers. Okay. Obviously, this is a, a little bit of a different team. Yeah. Um, but he had a 30.2 whiff per swing percentage last year which would put him at 16th best on the year. Um, obviously, his sample was a little bit shorter or a lot shorter than than most of the big guys, but that 16th would put him between Archer and Kershaw as far as whiff, whiffs per swing go. Interesting. So he's 6,000. Like if he was like 7,500, I probably wouldn't even like look at him, but 6,000 on DraftKings, um, and I kind of like to go one stud pitcher – and then pay down for my other pitcher so I can get in some bats on, on most slates. You know, every, every slate's a little bit different, but sure. um, I don't think he's going to be owned. And I think he's got a little bit of upside here and you don't need a, a ton of upside. If he gets you 12 or 15 points, it's not going to kill you. So, right. At that price point, you're not, uh, it's not too bad. Yeah. And you don't, uh, and it's more of a DraftKings play because you don't have to worry about the win as much. So um, I don't know. I, I like him. I just, really like that stat whiffs per swing so he's way up on the list and you know if you're not playing richards i think that flaherty is a good pivot he'll probably have less than half the ownership of garrett richards yeah maybe. richards is going to be owned uh, yeah pretty dramatically tonight yeah so um no i like that um i mean that's all of that is very legit um I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not super excited about like about playing Flaherty. Like he could definitely get lit up here, but it's like the um, who were the who were the two? Oh, Brian Mitchell and Trevor Richards. So like Mitchell was like 20 percent in tournaments, and they were like around the same price. They were like 5400 on DraftKings, and then Trevor Richards was in like the same matchup, but he was going to be like three to five percent owned and Richards sure. was the better play. So it's just it's more of a of a tournament play, play a, a tournament pivot. Um there are some righties in this Brewers lineup that that do K. Um I don't know. I mean I just I just think it's a pretty good tournament play. So I I don't have a problem with it. I'd be I'd be nervous about that first pass through getting Yelich, Shaw and, and Tim's um other than that, if he yeah. gets through that that chunk, that three four five or that two three four five chunk of the lineup right out of the gate, I think it'll tell a big story. Yeah. Um, um, and then, I mean, if you know, you're obviously looking at him as a second pitcher on DK. Right. Right. Uh, it's certainly worth the flyer, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a, it's a price play. I think he's a pretty decent pitcher, and I think he's got a little bit of K upside because even the lefties, you know, he wasn't good at striking out lefties last year, but like Thames and Shaw, um, VR, those guys all are free swingers. So sure, there, there could be a little bit more K upside than it looks like. Yeah. And I'm not too worried about that. Uh, you know, like Cardinals are 46% to win, you know, based on the line right now, that's nothing, nothing crazy to overcome. Yeah. It's yeah. not like the Brewers are up in like the mid sixties or something, and you're really hunting for that win, right? Yeah, I definitely like him more on DraftKings mm -hmm. than I would on FanDuel. Yeah. Um, hitters, you know, I think we had talked on the both sides of this one. Well, what do we got for weather for Brewers Cardinals? Um, well, the the Brewers have a um, retractable roof, ah, so yeah. they'll All be good. they should be good as long as they manage that correctly and don't have a. Miami Marlins situation like last year where they Very true. have a retractable roof and they got a rain delay. Um, just amazing. Yeah, just to, like just summed up the Marlins. Yeah, I was gonna say like if any if anybody's gonna do it, it's the Marlins for sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, so, maybe um, Jeter there now. Yeah, 
Jeter. I'm too smart uh, for that. <laughs> I don't believe uh, anything that's coming out of my mouth right now. <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> I I don't think he should be a, an owner, but that's that's a topic for another day, I guess. <sighs> so Chase Anderson, I don't know. Do you like him? Not really. Not at, not at those price points. Most expensive yeah. pitcher on DK is, or third most expensive pitcher on DK is. Uh, that's a pretty healthy number. Yeah. So I think he's good. I'm just not ready to pay. 10,100 on DraftKings, especially when, like, if he was on the slate yesterday and he was around this price, then I would have definitely considered him in this matchup. But you've got Kershaw on the slate. You've got um, Verlander. So I'd rather just find the extra salary or go down to my favorite guy, Zach Godley, who's 9K. Okay. Um, Yeah, I would rather have Godley on DK. I would rather have Verlander or Kershaw. Um, So I, I don't get to Anderson very naturally and then on FanDuel I greatly prefer Verlander um but yeah he's not really it's what 2500 yeah 2500 dollar difference in price so that's two separate guys altogether right for FanDuel it's Anderson at 78 Richards at 77 uh Godley at 7500 and then Hap at 71 um I would probably like Anderson the least of those four on a like a per dollar basis. Yeah. Wow. Godly seventy five hundred. I, I might have to play on FanDuel tonight. <laughs> yeah, he looks really good. Man, that's so cheap. Very, very. Um, um but I, I don't really want to target bats against Chase Anderson. Like I said, I think he's I think he's pretty good. So yeah. I like on this slate that I think there are a lot of bats that I like, a lot of different stacks that I like that I don't think will be super popular. So, I mean, I'd rather not target against a pitcher that I think is pretty good. So that's where I'm at with the Cardinals. Yeah, I would have a very, I would have very limited amounts of Cardinal stacks if I was going to do it. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't see anything that just jumps off the page running directly into Anderson. If they were running out a couple more lefty bats, I might think about it. Um, But 8.2 8.2 Ks per nine projected from Steamer with a sub three walk rate. Uh, that scares me. That could just, they could pile up the Ks here, um, which in theory should make me like Anderson a little bit more, but I just, I don't love the price point. Yeah. And yeah, it, on, on DraftKings, it's just, it's a price thing for me. So yeah. Um, yeah. for the Brewers. I can get into some sort of like two, three, four, five combo um, because I just sort of like running out that group of lefty bats in this scenario. Not in any sort of huge amount of, of volume, but that would sort of be the core of anything from this game that I would want to grab. Yeah, so... The- I'll take my chances on Ryan Braun. Right. So if you want to go Yelich, Braun, Shaw, Thames, because like I said, I mean, Flaherty, I, he, he may not have it all figured out. He probably doesn't have it all figured out, but um, he's going to have starts where he gets rocked and it's going to be probably because of that lefty power. So right. Braun bunched in the middle of those guys. They're all decently priced. Um, and especially if like if Flaherty is going to be chalky as the day goes on, I don't know whoever is touting him or whatever, but um, us. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the awesomeo.com so, website? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if he's going to be popular, then a leverage brewer stack that like makes a lot of sense. Right. So I'm not saying he's going to, he's like a lock for anything. I just think he couldn't get you um, 15 points in this matchup. I think that's pretty reasonable. Oh, ab- absolutely. On DraftKings. I don't know what that, what does that translate to on FanDuel? Like 35, 40? Uh, 35, probably. Somewhere yeah. in that area. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I see that upside potentially. Yeah, um, it's actually a game I want to watch now after just talking about it and having that back and forth. Yeah, the wife's out of town until Thursday, <laughs> so I literally don't have like an actual responsibility for the next three days. So it's just going to be a lot of playing around in an Excel sheet with four baseball games on in the background. Yeah, so watching I, yeah, Jack Flaherty dominance. Yeah, it's 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 really <laughs> a perfect scenario for me. She's like, oh, I'm not going to be back till Thursday. I was like, you could stay for longer. If you yeah. <laughs> I'm a horrible person sometimes. 
I feel bad. She, I, I gave her, I, I filled out her bracket, um, and she had Villanova, but she still finished ninth in, uh, in her company's bracket pool. Oh, she man. didn't have Michigan. A couple other people had had the final. So, sorry, baby. No <laughs> money today. <laughs> no money. Uh, let's hop to uh, Astros Orioles. All right. So we've got Astros. Oh, this is just brutal. Astros with a 5.3 implied total, number one on the day. Uh, Orioles with a 3.4 implied run total, which is dead last by three tenths of a run. Oof. This is just, it's its a heavy, heavy offensive beating here. Astros 70% to win based on current lines at Pinnacle. Uh, we've got Verlander going for the Astros. Uh, who is my favorite pitcher on the board. And we've got Mike Wright going for the Orioles, who doesn't have that same sort of value for me. Yeah. All right, <laughs> so let's get the – well, all right, Orioles bats. I'm, I'm just not going to target against Verlander. Orioles have gotten dominated pretty well over the last couple of games against Berrios. And then Morton had a good outing yesterday. Um. They strike out quite a bit, so I have no problems with Verlander. The only, well, I shouldn't say I have no problems. The only problem I have with Verlander is that um, you're not getting that big of a discount on him compared to Kershaw. It's only six hundred dollars right. cheaper. So I think Verlander will, will be lower owned, so he makes sense as tournaments. I think he has pretty similar upside to Kershaw. Sure, this matchup, um, and then yeah, no, no Orioles bats for me. I don't know a lot about Mike Wright, so do you, do you know it, um, like much about him? I mean, I look not up not especially. No, uh, I can tell you that his five point one five projected fit from Steamer doesn't exactly make me excited. Yeah, uh, seven Ks per nine, three walks per nine, um, a righty running into you know that Astros order even with them all being predominantly right-handed hitters, is still just, like, it's that bad of a matchup, even yeah. though it's all righty-righty, which is terrifying. So he, I think he pitched in relief last year. That sounds right. And, you know, like, the, the K percentage, it looks decent. Like, so the sample size is obviously smaller because he was a reliever. Um, never went past three point. Uh, three and two thirds. Um, so I don't know. I mean, this guy's not. He, he's he's not going to be in the game for long. I don't think for whatever reason. It, even if he pitches pretty well, he probably won't be in the game for too long. So, I mean, I've stacked the Astros. I think four out of five days that they've been on the slate. It's hard not to. They're just yeah. They're so deep. They I mean they've got all these righties at the top and then the lefties at the bottom of the lineup, and all their righties hit righties really well. So they're just all really good hitters. And um, they disappointed last night, I guess, against Chris Tillman. Yeah. But, I mean, another good run total over five. Yeah, it's, it, oh, God, it's crazy. It is a little concerning that it's over than it was against Tillman, but um, still still a good total. And Springer, Correa, Altuve. Well, the, okay, Correa also – took a ball off the ankle yesterday. He fouled one off his ankle, I think. Okay. And he left the game. So he's... I didn't see anything yesterday, though, so that yeah. makes sense. Okay. I just... I didn't watch the game. I just heard about it in a couple chats that I'm in. People okay. were pretty tilted over Correa leaving the game. Makes sense. Um, when you're spending that much on your shortstop, uh, if he goes down early, it's not going to yeah. be a good day for you. Yeah. So he he was out after his first at-bat, I think. Um I love Marlon Gonzalez here because no one ever uses him. He's a really good hitter against righties, and he's hitting behind all these studs like Correa if he's in, Altuve, Bregman, Springer. So he, he hits with guys on base a lot of the time, and he was 8% yesterday when all the Astros in front of him were like 30-plus. Yeah, that's a that, he's in a really great spot to pick yeah. up You know what could be a bundle of RBI just from how much talent is hitting in front of him. He should right. he should basically have guys on the entire game. Uh, yeah, so I I love Marwin, and no, I, for some reason no one plays him, and he's got dual position eligibility on DraftKings. He's first base and outfield, but he still comes in as the lowest owned Astro seemingly every slate. So yeah, um, uh, no problem there. Uh, no problem grabbing basically anybody from the Astros lineup. 
you know, obviously the top half is where you want to focus just from getting those extra plate appearances. But even if you end up grabbing like the lower ordered guys, you're getting the lefty righty matchup, which is, you know, a nice benefit. Um, I'd probably have my focus one through six. I'm with you a hundred percent on Marwin Gonzalez, especially at those projected ownership rates. Uh, a lot of value on the board, uh, just being left there from him, you know, said what eight percent compared to thirties for those yeah. other guys. That's crazy. Yeah, I think it was like it was like the hundred dollars single entry, and That's he crazy. was he was eight percent, and like Correa, Altuve, Springer, all those guys were like thirty to forty. And now they're all obviously so, that's going to happen again. Uh, these Astros guys are going to be hella popular today. Yeah, yeah as they, they should be. be. Yeah. Um, I mentioned before Verlander for me is my number one guy. I, I like him more than Kershaw tonight just because of the price. Um, and you know, absolutely, I have no fear of this Orioles lineup. I would have no problem playing Chris Davis as a one-off. Um, you know, you're getting the lefty-righty matchup. He's hitting at the top of the order. 2,200 on FanDuel. I'll, I'll, I'm willing to take my chances on something like that. Um, but that's yeah. very much just a, a one-off play. I don't want to grab anybody else with him at all. Yeah, okay. And then the thing I like about... I guess I'll push back a little bit on the Verlander thing. Okay, uh, let's hear it. For, for DraftKings specifically. So he only went 90 pitches last game and um he pitched six innings so he probably like if this was like a start in june he probably goes out and pitches another inning so i don't know i mean that's just one like tiebreaker i use like because sure. he usually he, he's got games like he'll have games this year where he goes 115 120 pitches like he's one of those guys that they just let go because yeah. he's he's just a horse and he just gets stronger as the game goes on um so only 90 pitches is concerning. It was opening day. Maybe he gets up to 100 this game if he's rolling. Um, but that's just one thing that that I'll push back on for DraftKings specifically. I think he's probably got the best chance to win tonight, even better than Kershaw. So Yeah, I so for me, I see him having the opportunity to be hyper-efficient. <clears throat> yeah. Scope, Jones, Mancini, Rasmus, Beckham, Alvarez, Caleb Joseph. The highest on base percentage projected from Steamer for all those guys is 325. Like he could just keep people off for any like which will naturally just keep his pitch count low. I don't see them getting a lot of like I would I'd be shocked if Verlander had more than what two walks. So yeah. I think that he has the opportunity to be pretty efficient with his pitch counts, which could get him deeper into the game. That's that's my sort of thought process there. I, they don't have anything filling out the order where I expect them to be taking a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, no problems with Verlander. I just wanted to... No, no, yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, I I, I don't think that you're going to be like, now zero Verlander tonight <laughs> in this scenario. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, he's. I like him more than Kershaw tonight. We'll see, we'll see how that shakes out for me. Cool. Anything else on Astros Orioles? Um... Oh, the catchers. So the okay. like, I was just scrolling through and trying to find a catcher that I like, and I think I'm probably just going to default to playing Gaddis or McCann because they're going up against this pitcher that we don't know much about. They got a high team total. They bat near the end of the order, so maybe they'll be a little bit lower owned because you got guys like Darno and um, who who's some other catchers that bat near the top. I guess there aren't there just aren't that many catchers tonight. Oh, Grandal, um, Castillo, yeah, Molina, if he plays, um, so maybe they go a little bit under owned, um, and I I like both of their matchups. So those yeah. are like the only two catchers I have listed because I just don't like catcher at all tonight. Yeah, I would I would be more likely to go with McCann over Gaddis. Um, twenty eight hundred. For McCann on FanDuel, 3400 for Gaddis on FanDuel. I'd rather just save that 600 and take McCann, especially with the, the lefty-righty matchup. Yeah. Um, Gaddis, the most expensive catcher on the board today. Man. What, what is he? Oh, he's 3400 Yeah, I mean, that's not terrible. No, not at all. Yeah, so. But I'd be more comfortable paying down to McCann. I think he's got a little bit better of a matchup here. Yeah. I agree. I like McCann a little bit better, I think, than than Gaddis. 
<coughs> lots of lots of catcher for FanDuel to me is similar. Um, but you don't you don't have to play a catcher on on FanDuel, right? No, not anymore. Yeah, it's I haven't the played there yet. Catcher this year, first base, so. so like you don't have to force any of that stuff any longer. Okay. Yeah. So to get to one of those guys, like you want to make sure that it's, you know, a prime matchup in my opinion, because right. you're right. more likely to find a first baseman that hits better than, I don't know, insert catcher here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's bounce to Diamondbacks Dodgers. Do you, do you remember what time we started this? Uh, let's see. You can go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, Diamondbacks, 3.2 uh, implied run projection for tonight. Dodgers, 4.1. Uh, that corresponds to Dodgers being favored uh, and winning 61% of the time. We've got Zach Godley going for the Diamondbacks, which I know we're about to talk about. And then we've got Kershaw, obviously, going for the Dodgers. Um, for me, uh, as we just talked about, I prefer Verlander to Kershaw. Um, I have no problems running out Kershaw in this scenario. Uh, Diamondbacks with the 3.2 uh, expected runs is, is the worst of the slate, so... You know, they're, Kershaw doesn't exactly have a lot running up against him. Um, give me, uh, give me a little bit on Godley. Yeah. Um, so I, I just love Godley. I <laughs> loved playing him last year. He's he's nine K on DraftKings. Um, despite all the lefties in the Dodgers lineup, you got like Bellinger and and Seager and Grandal. Um, this is actually one of the better matchups for him. You, these guys are all free swingers, all strike out over 20% of the time. Jock Peterson is like night was like 19.8 last year against righties. Um, they're gonna have trouble with the curve that Godley throws. They're gonna have trouble just with everything. Godley's just a really good pitcher. So sure. um, the K upside is, is there. He struck out righties at or I, I believe he struck out lefties at a higher rate, if I'm thinking correctly here. You don't need a complete game shutout from Godley. Or no, sorry. Godley struck out 27% of righties last year. Okay. Um, good at limiting hard contact. Good XFIP on both sides. Um, I think he's just a stud, and I think he's really underpriced here. So I think 8 to 9 Ks is pretty firmly in play, even if he only goes 5 or 6 innings. Um, and you, like I said, you don't need a complete game shutout here. So... Um, on DraftKings, I love him. On FanDuel, I think that's a really good price for him, too. Yeah, I like him a little bit more, actually, on FanDuel than I do on DK, oddly mm -hmm. enough. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's just because of my irrational Verlander love. I would have trouble getting to both of them. Yeah. Um, but I would have no problem with Godley uh, on FanDuel. It would be a toss-up between him and Richards for me, and obviously I would be expecting Richards to be more owned than Godley here. Especially, well, it's a little bit trickier on FanDuel with the Dodgers being such predominant favorites. Yeah. Um, I can see a scenario where, like, he just doesn't have enough high end um, in this matchup. I'm nervous about the amount of lefties that he's going to have to face. I like him as a, in general as a pitcher. That 3.92 uh, projected FIP for me is, is nice after seeing so many 4.5s and 5s yeah. over the first half of this slate. Uh, I think it's just too much to overcome. Okay. Um, yeah. And, you know, look, it's good. I don't – if we just agreed on everything, we wouldn't need a oh, two-person I... show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, so. he'll, he's not someone that I'd have an overwhelming amount of, but I'm going to need to look at it a little bit further to get an idea of what – I think his ownership will be compared to to Richards and to Chase Anderson on FanDuel with all those guys being, you know, separated by 300 bucks. Um if he's going to be crazy low compared to those two, then I think that brings him into play a little bit more because I don't think that gap should be as big as what I think the ownership is going to show. Yeah. Um as far as hitters in this game and we started I think uh 10:35 Eastern to 10:40 Eastern. So, do we need to pick it up a little bit? Well, we don't have to. I mean, it's okay. up to you. Okay. Uh, 
I don't so know what your, as, my my day is wide open, so I don't know what your day is looking like. No, yeah, my it's too, really I, easy I, to ramble in these things. Yeah, it, it is. Um, I've just got some some NHL stuff to um, push out today. So if you guys play NHL, I'll have the stacks and spotlights. That's me who writes those. There you go. My username is Tommy Nation One. Um, so look for that later. But anyways, the uh, hitters in this game, I'm not really. I'm, I don't really. Particular, particularly like any hitter in this game. So I just like Kershaw and Godley. And then one thing I will say about Godley is his velocity was up like a mile or two, um, one or two miles per hour in spring training. So okay. he That's might legit. even be getting better. Um, I don't know. I'm just really excited about him this year. Um, so I'm going to probably play him on my one lineup tonight. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on hitter wise. I don't really have any interest in anything on the Diamondbacks, and um, I'll have some Dodger stacks. Uh, I don't see a, a real way around it for me playing, you know, a ton of lineups. Yeah. Um, you know, stuff in that uh, in the Seager, Puig, Grandall, you know, Bellinger gap for me. That two, three, four, five is what I'd be focusing on. Um, I think there's a, they're going to be popular, obviously. Or I would you think? I I think they are. I would I would expect oh, them man. to be. Not against the god. <laughs> you don't no. think they'll be popular? No, I I mean I think people will like the the four point three run total. That's decent on the road. You're in Chase Field, who where you know the humidor or whatever um, has not lived up to what it's supposed to it, there have not been runs limited that could be a, a thousand other factors but um maybe people will just say oh humidor is it's a lie and chase field is still the second best hitting park in the majors or whatever so you maybe, might be right maybe i'll have to look at it a little bit deeper I, I i was anticipating them being slightly popular tonight okay i mean yeah. i guess i hope they aren't uh because i'll probably like them more than the public Okay. Um, but anything like Corey Seager for me looks like a really nice option. Um, and I sort of feel the same way about Grandall. And then if I have to take Puig to get a 2-3-4, you know, I'm I'm okay with it. I don't love it as much for Puig, um, but I like cheering for Puig, so I can handle it. Yeah. yeah, I love Puig just in general. It's so. just He's just an energetic dude. Yeah, like baseball he, needs more Puig-like guys. He's... I 100% agree. I love that guy. Um, Do we need to talk about Kershaw a little bit? I guess. I mean, I, there's not much to talk about. Like he, he's just the one guy that I'm just probably not going to ever target bats against, and let until we see that he's over the hill. And I don't think that's this year. No. Um, there's just no need to get cute and target bats against him. He's he's 12.2k, and it's a pretty fair price. He probably won't go over 100 pitches tonight. Um, regardless of how it's going, but he's like Verlander, he could be super efficient and just mow guys down. So I like him a ton here for 12.2K. Yeah, I, if if Verlander wasn't on this slate, I'd like Kershaw a lot more at the high end. But I, for me, I just have the it's just easier for me to spend that extra $1,200 elsewhere on hitters, on FanDuel at least. Um, but obviously, Kershaw's in a great spot. You know what you're getting when you're paying up for him. It's not. It's not like you're crazy for running him out there. He looks. He's Clayton Kershaw. Um, I'm just happy to be able to grab. Like the gap between you know it's Kershaw at 11.5, Verlander at 10.3, and then Chase Anderson is the next most expensive pitcher on the main slate at 7,800. So, I'm just naturally taking that money saved from Kershaw for Verlander. Uh, it's just hard for me to go all the way up to him um, on this on this slate in particular. Yeah, on DK, I'd I'd have more of him. Um, okay, just because the 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 spread of salary is a little bit different. Um, but that that gap is so huge that I know that I want to have one of those top two guys, and I just think that Verlander grades out a bit better tonight. Fair and enough. then Kershaw, will, you know, strike out fourteen or something. And I'll look <laughs> yeah. like a dummy in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody lit into us and uh, or lit into me in the first video. Oh, this is yeah. wrong, and this is wrong, and this is wrong. I was like, Phew. 
<laughs> but you're gonna spend a lot of time finding all the things that I'm gonna say wrong. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, it's you know, it happens. Yeah. All right. Why do I have a gap as the, for the sixth hitter for the A's? Sixth a- hitter for the A's. Uh, is Piscotty in there? I don't see a Piscotty. We're gonna find out. Uh, let me run off this uh, the the basics for the game. We'll yeah. let you hop into it, and I'll try to figure out why I didn't type a six onto someone for the A's. Uh, A's and Rangers. Uh, A's with the four point five implied run total. Rangers four point zero. A's fifty six percent chance to win. Uh, Kendall Graveman going for the A's. Cole Hamels going for the Rangers. Let me know what you like. Yeah, I, I like A's bats here. Um, I am not a Cole Hamels truther. He, I think he's pretty close to being a gas can. Um, I love the A stack here. All this righty power. You've got Chris Davis, one of my favorite plays on the slate. Him, um, Piscotti, Marcus Semyon, they're all over 40% hard hit rate against lefties last year. Hamels gives up a ton of right-handed hard contact. He did... He gave up quite a bit against the Astros, even though he had a good start on paper. Um, so I love the A's righties. Um, I'm, I'm forgetting a couple of them. Oh, Smolinski at 2,400. Looks like he's supposed to bat second. Yeah. So that's just – that's a really nice value there. Yeah, 2,000 on Fandle. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, min salary. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if I want to play Matt Olson, but um, if you're stacking it up two through – five then he's for power especially yeah uh, i'm with you Um, i like the a stack a lot against hamels yeah Um, just a lot of righty bats outside of olsen Uh, i think you can go one to four really easily here and it fits from a from a salary perspective particularly on fanduel uh really cheap across the board yeah um and I don't really – I have no interest in, in running Hamels out there as a starter. Neither do I. I think he might actually get some ownership because people know the A's strike out so much. But I think I, – I don't like Hamels at all. Um, I'd much you. rather have the A's stack. And, yeah, that's where I'm at as far as that matchup goes. Love for Graveman as a value play on DK? I don't like Graveman. He just doesn't strike out enough guys for me. And then – um, there there is some power in this Rangers lineup. Of course, you've got uh, Gallo, who I like quite a bit in the two hole. If he's still there, yeah. Um, he's and he's gonna probably make contact against Graveman quite a bit. Graveman has a fifteen percent K rate sure. and only a six point eight swinging strike percentage last year. So if if Gallo is gonna make contact, you know, for half of his at bats at least against this guy, then um. It could go a long way. So he's he's one of those home run one off guys that I like. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of in the same boat. I don't I don't really want to have any part of either of the pitchers. Um, I would take a flyer on Graveman on DK as a second pitcher, uh, but there's a lot of downside in that. Yeah, I just don't see him being very highly owned, and I like the idea of getting a guy. Um, you know the A's at fifty six percent chance to win. That's that's pretty nice for the guy with the third lowest salary on DraftKings. Sometimes I just mm-hmm. try to, you know, play the data a little bit and hope that that sort of that run gap from the implied total uh, carries a little more weight. I, he doesn't miss bats at all. Six Ks yeah. projected per nine from Steamer. Um, it's just one of those hopes where the hits are two people and not to the people in the stands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, so, and, you know, a lot of lefty bats on the Rangers, so it is it is a little scary. Starting off right right away with Chu and Gallo, like, you could be you could be down 2 nothing with a Chu single and a Gallo home run, and it's yeah. we're eight pitches into the game. So I don't want it to seem like, you know, Kendall Graveman is my lock of the day at 5,800 or anything. Uh, I just think he's interesting as a second pitcher, just sort of from the the implied win percentage for the A's. Uh, I'm with you on hitter stacks for the A's, though. Uh, going up against Hamels, I don't, you know, it's not, you're not getting 2011 Cole Hamels. <laughs> he's, it's a very different guy at this point. Um, so Semi and Smolinski, uh, 
you mentioned Chris Davis as one of your favorite plays on the board today. I would uh, 100% agree. Um, just getting a bunch of righty bats against Hamels is going to – should pay off pretty nicely. Um, I, I don't have any problem grabbing uh, A's stacks. I wouldn't – I I probably wouldn't pay any freight for Matt Olson. Um, 3500 on FanDuel. Let's look at the rest of the first baseman for FanDuel right now. Olsen is seventh most expensive first baseman. You know, lefty on lefty. I'd rather pay an extra hundred dollars and get Justin Smoke. Yeah, and that's, that's not even close. Right. That's that's the problem. Is that uh, Smoke is so cheap? I don't know how that. I don't know how I'm gonna get away from him. Um, so what he's just on DK. Forty. Yeah, he's forty one hundred on on draft. Olsen's forty one hundred. Um. Yeah, I. Oh, I would avoid Olson. There's no reason to to try to force that lefty lefty matchup. There's enough yeah. to like on the other on the right handed side for the A's. That's fair. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then just Gallo on the other side for me. He's he's the main guy I want to target. I don't really want to stack against Graveman, but um, I really do like Joey Gallo just because he's one of those guys that he's going up there every time to hit a home run, and if he's gonna make cool. contact, then. He's got a pretty good chance at doing it. I would, I'd, I'd be okay stacking him with Chu. Okay. Yeah. Um, potential for those extra, extra plate appearances. Um, Chu at twenty two hundred on Fanduel. Oh man. Uh, yeah. Just getting on, you know, if if you're willing to take a flyer on Gallo, I mean, you're taking that flyer because you think that he has a, a very nice opportunity for a home run, and if that's the case, there's a decent chance that Chu can be on for that home run. Uh, yeah, Chu with a projected 357 on base percentage, 432 slugging from Steamer. Those numbers are both higher in a, or will be lower in this, uh, or higher rather. God, I'm, I haven't had enough coffee today. It's been a long, long 24 hours. Uh, that 357, 432 slash uh, would be higher against Graveman. Um, Chu always been exceptional against righties, not so exceptional against lefties. So if I were going to do any sort of Stack. I would try to do a two-man game with Chu and Gallo. Yeah, um, I get it, especially for twenty-two hundred. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's a price play more than anything hitter. else. Yeah. To get him at two hundred dollars above minimum, yeah, hitting lead off against Graveman, who's you know, it's it's not as if he's some stud. He should be putting balls sort of in the area for Chu. Yeah, and uh, you know, Chu's always had a, a real nice batter's eye. So, um, all right, two more. Two Angels more. and Indians. Angels with a 4.3 uh, implied run total. Indians 3.7. Um, Angels 57% chance to win. Garrett Richards going for the Angels. Uh, Josh Tomlin going for the Indians. Um, we've touched on it a little bit. Love Garrett Richards tonight, particularly on DK. 6,500. Grades out. Amazing. It's really hard for me to get away from Richards if I'm playing on DK tonight. Yeah, me too. I... So, well, I'll just talk about Tomlin. Tomlin's not a guy I'm not going to – he's just – I'm not going to play him. He's a guy that challenges guys. He doesn't really walk guys. doesn't really strike him out. A ton of hard contact. Um, but, yeah, Chalk, Chalk Garrett Richards is scary. Yeah. So this is why I, I am sort of leaning towards Flaherty in – I don't know if I'm going to do it in one lineup, but, like, if I was playing a bunch of lineups, I would have a bunch of exposure to these guys that are around Richards' price – because people are probably just going to default to him because they see the crazy strikeout numbers. Um, it's not that great of a matchup for him, but he's ju you're just betting on the talent and you're betting on him getting a bunch of strikeouts. You're not asking for a shutout here, I don't think. Um, the, the, Cleveland, the Cleveland lineup is really tough, and it's a 3.8 total, so people are going to see that and want to play Richards. He's going to get some steam as the, the day goes on, I think. Yeah, he's going to be very popular. Yeah, on DraftKings in particular, people are pretty forgiving after the like even after the last outing. Like, the talent's there. He pitched five innings, four Ks, three walks, um, only eleven percent hard contact. So that was good to see. In his last start, um, the swing strike was like nine percent, I think. So, I don't he's, know. I mean, he's just he's just a good pitcher, and yeah. It's not a great spot, but he's 6,500. He's just 
clearly underpriced. He's the 13th most expensive pitcher on DraftKings tonight, and he's the fourth most expensive pitcher on FanDuel. That is crazy. Yeah, so just play him on DraftKings and, I mean, get some more exposure to some other guys near his price on FanDuel is what I would do if I was playing him on both sites. I'm anxious to see what the ownership is on FanDuel if he gets... I think he's fine on FanDuel at 7,700. No problem having him. It doesn't grade out as anything ridiculous at that price point. He's grading out so well on DK. And I wonder if the the price difference on DraftKings will push up ownership on FanDuel because people have like poor reading comprehension. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people do. Like they'll they'll look at these sites and they'll see someone being in love with Richards on DraftKings especially, and then all of a sudden they'll just plug him in on FanDuel and it's completely different game over there. Like yeah, it's like I'd, I'd almost prefer price. Godly on FanDuel. Oh yeah, Richard. I'd much, I'd much prefer Godly. Yeah, on FanDuel. Um, I think it's crazy that Tomlin is twelve hundred dollars more expensive than than Richards on DraftKings. It's yeah, unplayable yeah. on DraftKings in my opinion. Yeah, hundred percent. I I hate that play tonight. I actually like um, I mean, I obviously like some Angels bats here. Yeah, mostly Trout and Justin Upton. They're just two really good hitters. Trout will get some ownership, but Upton hasn't been owned really at all, and he's a thousand dollars cheaper on DraftKings. So that's a guy that hits righties pretty well. Um, he does K a lot, but uh, Tomlin's not a guy that's going to K a lot of people. So six point four uh, Ks per nine projected from Steamer, one point five walks per nine, which is just an, an absolutely crazy amount of control. Um, yeah, I'm with you on Trout walk, and guys. Upton. He just and he get that's why he gets crushed sometimes. Yeah, yeah, he, you know, lots of balls in play uh, for mm-hmm. Josh Tomlin. I'm yeah. willing to take flyers on, well, not so much flyer on Trout and Upton. Uh, <laughs> let's be clear here, uh, but there's not a ton that I, I love for the Angels. You know, it's mostly righty righty stuff at the top. I think there's better value out there across the board. No problems taking Trout. No problems taking Upton. Uh, I I don't I'd limit my exposure to like Cozart or Pujols. Yeah. And then after that, you're already down to the five hole for Cole Calhoun, which I don't I don't see any real like interesting stack for him. So for me, there's not a ton of hitter plays in this game at all. Yeah. I mean, okay. So also, like I was saying with Flaherty, if if he's going to be popular, well, we we know that Richards is probably going to be pretty popular. Right. And you know the Indians are a team that are – they're really good at putting the ball in play, especially that top half of the lineup. Yeah. And they do have some power. So if you want to do – if you're making a bunch of lineups, like I would have a, a couple of Indian stacks in there just because you're getting so much leverage um, if Richards is going to be 40% in tournaments. Yeah, you definitely want to be on the other side of that on DK um, with an Indian stack. Uh, Garrett Richards is – probably going to be over owned yeah and to be able to be on the opposite side and have lindor kipnis ramirez alonzo you know basically lefty 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 right out of the gate that's kind of scary yeah it's a tough lineup it's not like you're you're playing richards for the talent and like the k upside for the bottom of the lineup yeah you're not playing him because it's some great matchup no not at all um yeah if you don't have garrett richards as one of your two hitters you should probably have a few indians in that lineup it's just a natural if you're gonna if you're gonna fade on the hill you might as well grab the opposite side of it and really double down on it yeah like jose ramirez or like lindor yeah. either of those guys absolutely I think those are both awesome plays as as leverage tournament plays I wouldn't even have much of a problem like taking an absolute flyer on Edwin Encarnacion because he's probably not going to be owned at all. Yeah, forty three hundred on DraftKings. That's a pretty decent price. He's going to be under five percent, I would think. Yeah, just as like a a high end, you know, high end talent taking in a matchup where no one's going to touch him. Right. I don't think that. There should be that much respect in that case. Yeah. Not that I'm going to have like 45% in Encarnacion <laughs> or anything, but you know maybe an extra an extra lineup here or there. 
All right, let's close this uh, this rambling, what's looking to be 90 minute video out. <laughs> Off to a great start. Yeah. Hope you guys like us viewership we because uh, you're gonna need to get pretty used to this. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll try to cut it down in the future. I'll I'll, I'll yeah. shut up a little bit. Well, no, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> this is a work in progress. Yeah. It's April third. We've got five more months of this. <laughs> at, at some point in time, I'm bound to be okay at uh, rambling in front of my my camera for the day. <laughs> Padres four point one implied run total. Uh, Rockies four point two. We've got forty nine percent chance to win for the Padres. Tyson Ross on the hill. Um, for San Diego, Kyle Freeland going for the Rockies. Um, you know, I don't love a ton of it here. That's for sure. Uh, Tyson Ross for me is not at all playable. Um, Kyle Freeland, not really somebody I want a part of, particularly on DK where his price is really high. Yeah, I honestly, I don't really have much interest in this game. It's two pitchers that I'm not really looking at. And then there are a couple one-off hitters that I think are okay. I don't like stacking against Freeland. He just, he's really good at, at getting ground balls and limiting the, the hard contact. So I guess the one, or the two guys that I'm looking at as one-off plays for San Diego would be Perella and Renfro. They're both just pretty cheap, and they're good, like, last last guys in type of plays. They're not guys that I'm I'm jamming into my lineup by any means. Sure. And then on the other side, like, Blackman's just on another level right now. But he's 5,100 in a pitcher's park, and it's 60 degrees. It's not like it's blazing hot where the ball is going to be jumping off his bat or anything. But um, he'll probably go under-owned once again. So I have no issues with Blackman. Uh, particularly in that spot of the order, getting the lefty-righty matchup. Tyson Ross, not exactly anything you need to write home about. Um, I'd probably be fine with Carlos Gonzalez, too, as a one-off. Uh, I think there's a little bit of upside there. Um, for the Padres, Perella looks fine to me. I, would, I wouldn't have an issue going there. Um, I really wouldn't have much of an issue going Margot and Myers, either. I'm okay, not the so, biggest Freeland fan. Freeland fan. Um, I just think there's some opportunity there for those two guys at the top of the order. Margot at 2300 on FanDuel. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity for him to get on base today. Not that he's some sort of great on base threat, um, but at 2300, getting that righty lefty matchup, I think that could be pretty nice at the top of the Padres order. Yeah. So would you stack up the Padres? Mm, like Margot I mean, Myers Perella. Yeah. Sure. Okay. That's a low on FanDuel. Twenty three hundred for Margot. Twenty eight hundred for Myers. Twenty two hundred for Perella. Um, I think that's a pretty nice low salary stack. The only problem is you're going outfielder, outfielder, outfielder. Uh, yeah. Which is a little tricky. It's hard to get to a Padre stack that looks clean. Okay, yeah, because I'm just thinking, like, you could pay up for, like, Verlander and Godley or something, like, Kershaw and Godley or Kershaw and Anderson and then probably do, like, a full Padres stack. But I just don't like targeting against Freeland that much. So, um, Yeah, I'm price... not as apprehensive about targeting against Freeland. I just don't like the positional nature of the stack. It's hard okay. to, to totally make that work. So. Yeah. You can do, you know, first base outfield, outfield for the Padres, but there's no, if you could get one to like the middle infielders or like a third baseman or a shortstop, but I don't really want Headley or Galvis. So you're kind of stuck with just outfield or first baseman roster spots. And at that point, that's not a stack that I love to have. So it looks better in theory than it does on paper, I think, for the Padres. Sweet. Do we have anything else we need to touch on? Um, I don't know. I think we covered it all in the. Yeah. In the uh, I'll hour tell you what. If half. we missed it. <laughs> yeah. If we missed it in ninety minutes. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this is going to be sort of the structure moving forward, but we'd love for you guys to to comment and let us know what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of, things that we need to touch on a little bit more. Um. We want to build this out as. Uh, 
you know, a show that people actually want to watch and, and check <laughs> out each day. Um, so any thoughts you have, please check us out. Check out awesomeo.com for any baseball content, hockey content, uh, NBA content. We have it all. Golf Masters content coming up this week. Yeah. Um, I don't mess with golf much. Do you? I mean, I'll play. I play like casually. Sure. But um, not, nothing huge. You know. Like so. I'll, I'll have a bunch just because it's the Masters. Yeah, like it's the Masters. You got you got to play. People. It. Yeah. Luckily, we have a decent resource on our team uh, to help us out with this. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything else. So if you like this video, guys, please like and subscribe. Uh, very helpful for us moving forward. Um, if you want to find me on Twitter, uh, it's at Josh Engelman. It's pretty much at Josh Engelman for everything. FanDuel username, DraftKings username, Twitter, everything. That's just what it is. Uh, Jake, if people want to find you, where do they got to look? Yeah, so my, my articles are on Osmo.com. My my uh, usernames on DK and FanDuel are Tommy Nation one And then my Twitter is just my name. It's at Jake Hari, J-A-K-E-H-A-R-I. Awesome. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you guys have questions for me or anything throughout the day, feel free to hit us up. And uh, we will talk to you again probably tomorrow. So good luck tonight, everybody. Good luck.